you can hide no longer. You now have the world looking directly at you. Hot roll, red roll, engaged. All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Mr. Fresh, and in today's video, we are going to be installing Kali Linux inside of VirtualBox on our Linux platform. Mine is Ubuntu, yours can be a different distribution. Let's go ahead and get started. So Kali Linux is the most advanced penetration testing distribution. It is open source, Debian based, and geared towards various information security tasks, such as penetration testing, security research, computer forensics, and reverse engineering. I'm over here on the homepage at Kali.org and I'm going to click on the uh, download button right here in the center of the page. That takes me to another page where I have to choose my platform. One of the cool things about Kali is you can install it on so many different um, devices and in so many different ways. So they even have images for mobile phones, uh, containers, live boots. I think they even have one for a watch somewhere in here. But we're concerned with the virtual machine, so I'm going to click on this area right here that will take me to another page and this shows us our pre-built virtual machines you have 64-bit uh, and 32-bit now we obviously are looking at 64-bit because uh, the machine that this is on and most likely the machine that you are using VirtualBox on is going to be a 64-bit machine um, you do have images for VMware, Hyper-V, KMU but we're concerned with VirtualBox you can download the torrent I chose to just download the standard three gigabyte file by clicking on this um, this part right here in the lower left and um, I already did that to save time I've already downloaded it and then over here on the far right you have this area where it says show checksum so if I click on that it'll flip this little um, tab or whatever you call it around to the other side and we have a SHA-256 SHA sum checksum so I simply will copy uh, the checksum because you always want to verify uh, the integrity of your image and make sure that your download has not been um, uh, altered or compromised in any way so I copy that and I will open up my terminal emulator now to save time I've already done this but uh, basically um, this is that checksum right here so I pasted it in uh, the lower portion of my split uh, windows here and then I ran the SHA-256 sum utility from the command line on my recently downloaded uh, image and we can see that the hashes do match which is what you want to see so with that out the way we can go ahead and move on to the next step which is actually getting this set up in a virtual box so I will exit out of that come over here to my virtual box manager which also is already open and we are going to do this a little bit differently than how I've done some of the um, how I've done some of the the other episodes here on installing different images in VirtualBox and that's because unlike some of the other ones um, Kali has provided us with a pre-built image whereas with some of the other the other operating systems that I did this with they did not have a pre-built image so we had to go about it a different way so actually let me go back over to the um, to the website here because they actually have some information on this to kind of walk you through this so if I go back to the main page here and click on uh, documentation and then click on uh, virtualization um, there's a section here I think it's this one right here import pre-made Kali virtual box VM and it walks you through this process which is very straightforward but the main thing is is that if you look up here um, it's telling you to extract the virtual box image uh, using um, the 7-zip uh, utility because if you notice uh, when we um, over here 
uh, if you look at the image, it did end in dot uh, 7z. So, um, in fact, if I run the file command on that image, it should identify that uh, as such. And it says it's a 7-zip archive data. So the first thing that we're going to do here, per the instructions on their website, is we're going to run um, this, this uh, command right here. So I will come back over here to my, um, my terminal emulator. And uh, we're going to run 7z and then x for extract and then give it the name of that archive. Hit enter and it is extracting it. Okay, so you can see here on the screen that uh, the command has completed successfully. Everything is okay, and we have um, done the extraction from the um, file with the .7z uh, or 7zip extension. And it did take it took a few minutes for that to complete, even with uh, 16 CPUs. Um, and now what we are left with is a, a folder now that has been created. So if I cd into that folder and list out the contents of it, we have two files. I was actually expecting a .ova file that I, or a .ova image that I would import, but I was kind of surprised it was a little bit different, no big deal, but we have a .vbox and a, and a .vdi. So if I run file, with an asterisk to um, to basically select uh, both of these images to run the file command on. Uh, we get back that one of them is ASCII text and the other one is a virtual box um, disk uh, image. So um, if I run ls-lh, we see that this is a 14 gigabyte uh, image so um, all right so what I should be able to do now uh, is I go back over to my virtual box manager um, I should just be able to drag and drop this so let's see if we can we can do that that'll probably be the easiest way of doing it so if I open up my um, file manager if I click on this one on the left and right click I can open it with VirtualBox that's what I need to be doing hey man I don't claim to be the smartest uh, person in the room it's been a while since I did it this way so that I believe is how you need to do it hey I'm doing this right now real time so don't blame me um, not sure why I have two instances of my VirtualBox manager open but uh, okay, so if um, you see that you now have it populated in the left side of um, the, virtu the virtual box manager screen, now if I come up here to settings, uh, we can basically go through everything like we normally would. I'll click on system and I will increase the base memory a little bit to 496. Um, I will click on the processor tab and increase the processors to four and um, there's you know there are other settings in here that I could configure so I'm not suggesting like you know this is the best way there there probably are other settings I would change but this is just basic stuff to just get it up and running um, if I come over here to storage you see that it has uh, created the the link to um, to the image and that's the main thing that, that we want to see happen here. So let me go ahead and click on OK. And now the real test is, is this thing going to start up? So let me come up here to the green arrow and click on Start. And I like what I am seeing. Let me hit Enter. And 
and we basically are looking at the splash screen with that wonderful and uh, famous, very recognizable uh, Cali Linux logo, that dragon. Um, if I hit escape, we can actually see the uh, kernel messages scrolling by on the screen as uh, everything all the services, all the daemons and so forth are started. And this is the first time uh, booting into this. Um, this is a pretty big image, so it it uh, is taking a little bit of time. Now, uh, I know that default, the login should be Kali and Kali. And if I put in Kali for the username and uh, Kali for the password, that should be should be all we need. And and wait for it now. There we go. There we go. Let me uh, see if I can make this bigger. Uh, so yeah, I'm probably going to have to set up. Uh, oh, okay, there we go. All right, that's what I want to see. So we have the uh, full screen image here. It did uh, adjust the size, which is great. And um, Kali Linux inside a virtual box. So uh, let me go ahead and open up a uh, terminal emulator real quick and as I've kind of been doing with all the other virtual box uh, images I just want to run the um, uh, uname command to look at the kernel version so I'll run uname dash a and we have a kernel version of 6.5.0 and we have Kali Linux, ladies and gentlemen, running inside a virtual box on February 20th, 2024. Now, obviously, this could be a very long video because we could just start delving into all the wonderful applications that are on this wonderful operating system. But uh, that is outside of the scope for this video. It was all just about showing you guys how to get this thing installed and running on VirtualBox. Um, I actually assumed that it was a .ova and I was just gonna do it a little differently, so I was a little bit surprised, but we walked through it. I had a few little stumbles and I chose to leave those in the recording because, you know, uh, this is life. I, you know, you, you do run into little issues. Um, with that being said, I hope that you guys got something out of this video. If you haven't done so already, please uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, post a comment in the description. Uh, I'm Mr. Fresh, and I will see you in the next video.